Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to the channel for this episode 10 on Constant Farm with me, Farmer Murphy. Well, as you can see, it's early July. I uh, ended up fast forwarding through most of the days in June. We didn't have a whole lot happen. Uh, if we take a look at our financial page here, in June we only had the one uh, bailing contract for salvage, which I completed. Um, so it consisted mostly of getting keeping our chores done, which was uh, shifting the pallets up at the market garden and keeping the biogas plant full. So we earned, as you can see, about uh, 30000 from the biogas plant. And from our sold products, that was entirely... Uh, from our farm shop so we made 18,000 there in June and then the excess silage bales I sold because uh, we have quite a few bales uh, down at the BGA still of silage so I didn't keep any of those so we actually got 26,000 there so you can see the the silage contracts really are the most uh, profitable ones right now they well, they may take a little time they're pretty pretty profitable and so far in July which is just this morning which I did the same thing shifted our products we've made uh, oh, a little 15,000 on our market garden so that's a pretty nice uh, income we've got there um, I did end up putting in where is it down here the seed plant I stuck it down here um, I ran 5,000 liters of barley through there yesterday in game and uh, we have another 5,000 liters, as you can see, of seed in there today. Um, I took the 5,000 yesterday and threw it in all our open air gardens up on top. Um, and uh, I will likely do that uh, with this seed today as well. Although if we look at our map here, we can see that if we scooch on over here that our barley field is ready to be harvested so we're going to need some seed to put that barley in um, so we'll make sure our seeder is topped up and then any excess we will again take and uh, keep feeding our open air gardens till they're full and speaking of which if we go and look at our production menu um, our dryer was just about full of uh, fertilizer 23,000 liters I believe it was it had in it so I picked that up and I put all of that into our market or our open air gardens as well um, and uh, I'll do the keep doing that and once they're full we're going to start selling that and that'll give us another uh, revenue stream but right now we're getting set up to do that harvest I've taken the harvester over already so we'll grab our large tractor here, which I believe is this guy. Yes, it is. And we'll grab our trailer, and we'll be all ready to get on that harvest. Now this barley, we are going to uh, put all in our silo for now. Um, we need some for uh, pig production, and we may amp up our seed production a little bit. Although right now we don't really have any way of storing it. And I really wasn't thinking of uh, using it as a... as a uh, money-making venture but we do have our seed tender that we can top up and we can make sure our seed or our planter are full but once that's done uh, we may suspend that but uh, we're going to use whatever barley we need for that and then of course for pig food and anything else that's left we'll uh, take and use for flour in our uh, production facility we did have a bunch of wheat from an early harvest that we put in there but we've used pretty much all of that so uh, yeah well you know I don't we'll see what we've got for barley uh, maybe we'll get some uh, leftover from uh, hopefully some harvest contracts or something like that be nice to keep the flour uh, 
portion running. I can sit there for now. I didn't actually uh, look to see when the rain was scheduled to come. It literally just popped up. Uh, oh, I want to make sure we got our star straw swath on. Just give me a moment. Okay, I'm back. I had to open up the help menu. Make sure that was going. One thing I like about this size of harvester, it uh, lends itself to doing in-cab work, where the uh, larger harvesters is much more difficult. We'll bale up this straw. Uh, we will keep uh, 24 bales, or one wagon load, and I'll make sure our straw is full but I think we'll have to sell the other bales on just because of the bale limit. And really we don't have any any other use for it. I suppose there is a, a factory that would turn it into manure, but uh, like I said, we're, we're really not focusing on factories. You know, what have we got coming up here? Mm. I think the guy who did the uh, seeding made a little mistake there, <laughs> I'm thinking. Looks like we had a little swat of wheat or something in there. Something that, oh, didn't quite get that corner correct. A little hard on the header when you run it into a tree. We uh, still would like to buy that uh, uh, yep, sugar beet field. Uh, I'm kind of was hoping there'd be some more contracts come up, and, and maybe there will that now that some uh, harvests are ready. There was another field I noticed that uh, also was ready to harvest. So Because once our cornfield and uh, if we can get that sugar beet off, um, we'll have all the component parts we need for pig food and we can get our pigs in. Another big uh, step towards our goal. If they hadn't nerfed the contracts, I pr you know, we could have just picked up a sugar beet harvesting contract and had enough left over. but. Uh, don't think that'll be the case and any extra sugar beets I think that production factory will actually take sugar beets and make sugar so uh, you know what we deem as excess we could do that with oh and I guess that actually would be the last thing we need we could make some cakes and we've got sugar we've got milk we can make butter we have the flowers and the strawberries, so I think that's everything we'd need so we could make some cakes this winter. I was thinking too, um, I know I said when we got the crops off we put precision farming in, and I'm kind of leaning towards not doing that. I think we might just leave this run as is. Um, we're making pretty good progress on it. Uh, we'd have a bit of a delay. Like, uh, we probably wouldn't get any more barley in because uh, we'd have to wait for those other crops. And uh, I think I'll definitely put it in on uh, No Man's Land because it's going to be a longer running series. But uh, I think this one will just carry on with, with the way we are. Uh, that's my thinking anyways and we'll look at uh, certainly the next the next series we start from the beginning 
we'll definitely have precision farming in from the start. If you have any thoughts on that one way or another, you can let me know in the comments, but that's just kind of the way I'm leaning. I was thinking about it today, like this, my goal was to be debt free and get all the animals going. And uh, we'll, uh, you know, certainly going to do that like prop. Oh, shoot. We shouldn't have been busy yakking and not paying attention. Now I drove over some crop. Talking and driving is a challenge for me, apparently. I do that. So even when I'm not talking, I get thinking about something. So, and I do that. Oh, I can't remember where I was. Yeah, we're talking about... But I was thinking, even when we uh, get the animals in, I want to uh, go on for a little bit and, you know, expand the farm and maybe expand the arable. But it was, I was thinking long term, like so far this has been my favorite uh, map on FS22. I think what I might do is I'll just... We'll start a new net, Let's Play... Um, like I said, that's several episodes on yet, I think. But I'll keep this game and I'll play it off camera, but bring you back in for periodic updates um, to show where it's going with this uh, with the farm. I was kind of thinking about that. It might be something that's kind of interesting. There's uh, the challenges. Uh, so many new mods coming out so quickly that you make a plan and then before you get that executed <laughs> there's some new stuff comes out it uh, makes you want to adjust your plan challenging but fun We'll see how it goes anyways. We want to get the pigs in and uh, we've got horses to do and we don't have any oats and I, c I want to make sure that we are doing our animals with all our own uh, feed. So we need to do something about that yet. It certainly would seem that we don't need, I was thinking we might need to invest in a grass field but I certainly don't think so. What we might need to do is thinking about doing something for storage. We um, may come to a point where we can't have enough bales of silage to get us through TMR and uh, and the biogas plant going all winter. Because I know I, when I was doing that silage contract, I hit the bale limit when I was about two thirds done, and I had to deliver some bales so I could can bale some more. I've got it uh, calculated that uh, if we have 24 bales of hay, straw, and silage, that should easily right now get us through the winter. Although I was thinking of, uh, we haven't had any new births or anything, but I was thinking of going and getting uh, another five cows to help uh, up our milk production. That little green patch is what I call an ESP. <laughs> there was an error someplace.
Well, guys, I, you've seen me do lots of harvesting. Um, so I think I'll leave you there. I'll get this off. I'll let you know if I get it done before the rain hits or not. I think then what I'll do before I sell off any straw bales, I'll uh, make up some TMR. Um, I can probably get one trailer load in. I was looking this morning and make sure the straw is uh, topped up. And then when we've got 24 bales, anything over and above that, I'll sell off. And uh, I'll bring you kind of back in at that point and uh, let you know what we'll be up to next. So I'll see you in a little bit. Well, it's just a little before 9, and as you can see, we did not beat the rain. Close, but uh, not quite, so we have to put a pause on this uh, particular operation. But I was thinking, uh, while I was doing this, that I think we will buy another five cows. Um, it'll give us uh, basically 30% increase in our milk production, slurry, manure and uh, nothing but nothing but upside there so uh, we've got some money so I'm going to go and do that so uh, I will meet you down at the animal dealer all right we're down here at the animal dealer with our trailer and we are going to get adults so we should get milk production right away and five more of those Uh, I, we want to make some butter along with the cheese and uh, right now with the cows we have we're uh, pretty much using up all the milk as we supply it so this will just just give us that little bit more so we can up our productions we're getting close to our next set of births I think we were at 70% excuse me 70% but uh, we had some money. Well, I guess technically we didn't because we still owe the bank 150000 but uh, we don't need to tell them that. I think while this rain carries on, about all I can do is uh, I will uh, top up our TMR and our bedding in that and... Uh, use up the straw that we have and then I'll know once I can uh, get that baled how uh, how many bales we can sell off Five more cows. Like I said, I'm going to mix up some TMR, top up the straw, and then we'll just have to wait out the rain. So I'll catch up with you in a little bit. So the rain stopped about 45 minutes ago and I was able to finish off this harvest. If we take a look at the barley we have now is 100 and almost 75 and we were almost exactly at 73 when we started so just a little over 100,000 liters we got off the field. Well it was raining let's go back here and look at the animals. I topped everything up on the cows 
while the rain was going on and I cleaned this up because we had a couple different stacks of uh, uh, silage bales just because they were at different stages of fermenting at the time so but they're all fermented so I've pulled the truck them all out and uh, stacked them back up neatly so we have a full stack of silage uh, after doing our uh, straw and t or our, yeah filling up our straw animal straw and our tmr we have two straw bales left and we used up our uh, excess hay bales and actually we took one out of the stack so we're one short of a full 24. but i'm hoping that a baling contract will come up and we can just top that up so i've got the tractor out here we're going to start baling up the straw i'll uh, just check the contracts quick nope still no contracts come up so I'm going to get this straw bale, and uh, I think what we'll do is we will uh, put canola in this field, because we should actually do some type of crop rotation. Uh, so I looked at the calendar. We don't need to put that in until I think it was next month. We've got some time anyways. So I'm going to... Uh, Sorry about that uh, abrupt cut out there. <laughs> I experienced some technical difficulties with my wheel. Uh, my accelerator got stuck at full throttle. I couldn't stop it, so had a little bit of a wreck. So thankfully I had to save the game. So got that all straightened out. So uh, apologize for that. Anyways, I was saying when that happened, and I don't know uh, when it comes to editing exactly where I'll have to chop that out of there, but uh, I am, uh, when I get this baling done, going to take the uh, that 5,000 worth of seed up and throw it in our outdoor uh, gardens, and we'll put another 5,000 liters of barley in there and let that process. That's what I was trying to say before calamity struck but I'm going to get this bailed up I'm going to fill up the uh, bale wagon um, and store that under cover and then everything else we get will sell and at that point when we're ready to sell it I'll bring you back in so we just can see what we get from that because I'm assuming we're going to get uh, you know a fair number of bales off of here so I will catch up with you in a little bit Okay, so I've got uh, all the straw baled. We've got our 24 bales here. Um, and I ended up uh, selling 56 bales off of here. And uh, during the course of baling them up, I did hit the uh, bale limit. Because um, we do have a fair number of silage bales still at the BGA to be processed. So I did further investigate looking at putting in the uh, factory that takes uh, straw and turns it to manure. The factory itself is not bad. It's only 20,000, but it has a very large footprint and uh, we'd actually have to buy land to put it on. Uh, couldn't squeeze it in down at the biogas plant and further complicate issues. The uh, it doesn't accept bales, so we'd have to, you know, do something to shred it. I guess we could use our uh, bale shredder but it only does two at a time so anyway at this time it just wasn't practical so I did sell them off um, didn't get a lot but uh, hey 17,000 we didn't have before so now I need to get this field mulched and I picked up a contract I'll show you here a baling contract again for silage bales um, the sell points the general store so I'll sell all those off um, so that's what I'm going to be up to uh, next so uh, this is the tractor I'm going to use to mulch, so i got to get this uh, equipment off of here and uh, grab our mulcher. And I'm just going to drop this over here someplace kind of out of the road because we're going to need it uh, for that bailing contract.
I'll I'll likely get a worker on this. I'll uh, just do around the edge and uh, get a worker going on that, and I'll go down while he works on that and mow that grass in field seven. And that'll probably be a wrap here for today on the farm. If I get those two uh, chores done. Should have a fair bit of daylight yet, seeing as we're only in July. Boy, this little Massey's been a workhorse. We had 33.6 hours on it. Yeah, we have the most hours on this tractor of uh, any of them. It does uh, all our baling and our yard work and when we're doing, uh, uh, you know, looking after the animals. Actually, I'm going to stop here and give it a repair. And then it helps in the field too. So we, we do a lot of work with this tractor. Really could use a wash, but there's not much point in doing that, I don't think. It's going right back into the field. Our uh, grass is ready to be mowed too, but unless we just uh, tet it and turn it to hay, um, the the bale limit's going to be an issue. I said that that would that was going to be one of the challenges here on this map. I guess uh, if I chose square bales. Um, could have done larger bales. Might have helped a bit, but that comes with its own set of issues. I think we'll put canola in this field. We've got two large fields of canola right now. Um, we're going to probably throw some of that into our farm shop but uh, the other uh, the remaining we'll be using for our pigs so but I don't uh, I don't think we need quite as large a field of it for next year because I'm assuming we'll have some left over and we do want to do some some type of crop rotation you wouldn't typically put the same crop in the same field back to back Summer has finally arrived here in Alberta. We've actually gotten some pretty nice weather these past few days up into the uh, high teens Celsius. Uh, pretty nice for this time of year. Farmers are truly out in their fields uh, working because uh, it's dried up enough they can get on there. I think our other two fields will uh, Right now, I'm thinking one of barley and uh, possibly one of wheat, I'm thinking. Uh, that may change, as <laughs> things often do around here. Oops, just a little bit there. Those trees are... Uh, 
I guess I could always do it in cab and just pick a spot and go along the edge. That's when you're working on the trees, it's a little bit easier to see. Just pick a point on the tractor and keep that lined up on the edge. Should be getting some new bursts pretty soon. The last time, at the beginning of this this morning when I checked, it was up to 70%. So maybe what next month? Have some cows. We're going to put in a uh, uh, factory for mixing our pig food. We can do that here pretty soon. I got kind of a neat idea, well I think it's a neat idea, when we go to put the pigs in I'll show you, but uh, I'm looking forward to uh, to doing. I'll carry on with this as per usual. Just about finished the outlining of the field and like I guess I'm going to get a worker going on this and I'm going to go down and mow the grass in field 7 I believe it was and uh, then uh, we'll get that bailed up and taken care of. I think there should be enough daylight we can uh, do that today. But I'll likely see you guys in the morning, and uh, we'll see what we'll get up to after that. So, uh, catch up with you later. Well, good morning. As you can see, we're down here at the biogas plant. This is the stack of silage bales that I've been waiting on uh, fermenting that have been causing our bale limit problems. I didn't do a count, but as you can see, there's there's quite a few there. I had a few more that were already fermented, but I used the last of them uh, yesterday into the biogas plant. So I have decided that we're going to do things just a little bit differently. Um, now, we could kind of carry on, and the uh, I could sell some of these off, because all of our grass fields are 100% ready to be um, baled and these bales here don't even represent all the bales we would get off of our fields um, just a portion of them so I could sell you know almost all of these off keep a few back uh, bring all those bales but again they would need to ferment before we could start to sell them off or they're just grass bales and uh, then any contracts that came up of course we'd be locked out of doing because I've already can only bale about half a field, like that field seven, which isn't very big before I had to deliver the bales. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill up the BJ with these. I'm going to sell the majority of these off. I'm going to keep a few back just to keep the BJ topped up. And we are going to buy a fermenting silo. Because this 200 bale limit that we're dealing with is nothing related to real world farming, but just a hardware issue. So, uh, that's why I decided to that we would do that. So if we take a look at productions, I believe it is. Yep, there it is right there. We're going to buy that Omatana fermenting silo. Now, the reason we're buying that one is, you know, I did a little research online last night, as you do. <laughs> wink, wink, nudge, nudge. It, anyways, and I tested, and that is the only fermenting silo I could find that would actually accept bales. All the others needed to be loose. And I wanted to stick with bailing for two reasons. One, 
is that was kind of the premise we started on. We were going to stick with bales. And I do like using bales for total mixed ration, although I, I have done those before, but I do enjoy doing the bale part of it. And the other reason is efficiency. If we uh, go into up to our look at balers here. Usually I can't see them for looking at them. If we look at these large square balers, they do 9,000 liter grass bales. Okay. And they, even if you buy the crone one here, it actually has the silage additive back. And that's actually what we're going to buy. So we can even do the silage additive like you can do on the loose for the grass bales. Now you might be saying, well, why wouldn't you just pick up loose? Well, the biggest forage wagons do about 50,000 liters. And if we come take a look around here, one thing I haven't really advertised because I just use it offline to speed things up. It's one of those cheaty things. I have this auto loading trailer. Now this holds 28 bales. Um, so 28 9,000 liter bales, what's that? That's uh, like 250,000 or 260,000 liters in one trip versus 50,000 liters. So, and because it's a square baler, you don't need to stop, it just spits them out the back. So for any of the straw, um, our straw that we're just gonna sell, or our grass that we're just going to silage off into our silo, we will use the square baler. I'm gonna keep the impress baler as well, and we're going to use that to do our silage contracts and any bales we need to support our cows. So I got thinking about that, you know, because it, you know, it did seem kind of crazy when I initially thought about it to have two balers. But uh, when I got thinking about it, why wouldn't you have the best tool for the job you're particularly doing? You have two different tractors, two different sizes. So that's what we're going to do. So <laughs> hopefully that doesn't upset anybody and they understand why I'm doing it. So we are sticking with bales. We're just going to put them in a fermenting silo, uh, basically a way to store them so we can get around the uh, silage uh, or the bale limit count. And the other prop impetus for doing that is if we take a look at the map here, contracts aren't quite as prevalent. So if we take a look... You can see that 17, 19, 16, and 13 have all been harvested and the fields already cultivated. And those are fields that last year I did pretty much all that work on, either plowed them, cultivated them. There's currently no contracts up at all. Matter of fact, recently, all I've been getting is baling contracts. And if we want to expand, even if we look at these... Uh, small arable fields like they're 400,000 but we can expand by picking up some of these smaller grass fields and silaging them and make money uh, that way so uh, that we can take a bite because I really do before I leave I'd like to be in the position where we can buy you know some more arable fields um, I know we've got designs on this one here next but that's 400 grand we're definitely going to have to borrow some money for that uh, to get the rest of the, our pig food product but I want to get the farm built up to the place where we can take a look at like buying something like field five or you know well maybe even field one even if we don't get it built to, to that exact point but we can see that kind of level of money is coming in and it would just be a matter of time so hopefully uh, it wasn't uh, a TMI, too much information. So I'm going to go ahead. I am going to do as I said, dump these in, sell some off, get the silo put in here kind of in the corner. The other nice thing about it is it's got a fairly small footprint. And I'll uh, I'll bring you back in and we can see the results of our handiwork and see where I were, we're at money-wise when we get all that done. So see you in just a little bit. I'm just on my way up to the bale sell point with our first load of silage bales. And there were a couple things I forgot to mention. Another reason uh, to use a square baler is that, as I said, because the bales are 9,000 liters, that really helps with the bale count on the floor versus 3,500 liters. 
and if we were to continue to use the impress we you know we'd have to stop and wait for all that wrapping because there's no way to turn the wrapping off they're still just grass bales but our, we'd have to wait for that time where the square baler you know no stop just carry on and away you go so it'll be much quicker so uh, just a couple points I realized I forgot to mention that I thought I would mention on my way up to the store I did set aside one trailer load um, uh, bales that we'll throw into the biogas plant because it it's taking I'm sure we'll have some grass from uh, fermented from our uh, our fields before we use up those bales but it takes about six bales every day uh, to top it up but I uh, thought it better be rather be safe than than sorry so anyways I'll carry on I'll get this done we'll see where our money is at and uh, I'll give you an update at that time catch you in a minute well there our fermenting silo is in we have a few bales here yet like I said we, that's to uh, keep our PJ topped up in the interim I mean this silo does have a fairly small footprint and a reasonably good processing time I would have liked uh, something that was a little bit more modern looking but like I said nothing else would take bales um, you may be wondering why I didn't just save these silage bales and, and dump them into there and wait for the a good price because it's pretty much the worst time of year to sell silage and that's because it wouldn't take silage bales I did try uh, I will take the grass bales but wouldn't accept the silage bales so anyways so we're gonna go online here and let's order up our baler like I said I'm going with the crone one simply because it's got the ability to add that silage additive tank it's the only one that's really our only option and as you can see we do have enough money to purchase that so let's go ahead and do that so 15,000 uh, so we didn't increase our loan at all it's uh, still if you take a look at 150 so I'm pretty happy about that actually and uh, because we have this that forgoes the need of having a multi fruit silo here for the near future anyways um, so all is good so I'm pretty sure let's just double check I don't think there's oops wrong direction nope no contracts so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do all our grass fields um, and we'll bring them down here we'll cut them bale them and bring them down here and throw them in the fermenter and the nice thing is we can forward from here right to the digester so I won't need to come down and throw bales in anymore but we are out of time for this episode so that'll be the start of the next episode so if you're still with me I want to thank you for watching I really appreciate if you found it entertaining or any useful information I encourage you to hit the like and subscribe button if you want to see uh, when other content like this lands I encourage you to hit the notification bell but that is a wrap for this episode and until next time Farmer Murphy signing out.